my, my background. And I came here to learn how to scuba dive. <laughs> so I was supposed to just stay for a week and go back to work. And uh, something happened when I was down there that I said, I don't have to go back. So I'm going to stay. And I stayed. So for 40 years. And at the beginning, I was mostly dedicated for diving. So I did all my career as a diver, like to become instructor and whatever. Uh, but at the end, I realized that I had to become a, a marine biologist. Okay. So I went to United States and I went to Nova Southeastern University and I did a master's degree in marine biology and I specialized in corals. And I came back to Cozumel with that. At the beginning, I come over here and I was just checking the corals but not thinking of doing what we're doing now. But when I was working in the dive school, one of the instructors went to where I had planted a coral and he grabbed the coral and broke it. And he says, why are you planting corals? And in that moment, Cozumel Coral Reef Restoration was born. Okay. And from that moment to now, we have planted more than 10,000 corals. So, you know, it was the motivation of why, why we are the ones who are enjoying this, the ones that we are making money from it, we're not the ones that they are more responsible to protect the reef. And we have to reach the people that without this, they won't have the money that they are having. So it's better to preserve the bruise of the golden eggs instead of just trying to get out everything and kill it just because. Over those 40 years, how have you noticed the reefs changing your mind? Dramatically. Bad. Since the 40 years when I got here in 1982 to 2022, we lost 80% of the corals of Kusuma. 80%. That's staggering, because now the only thing you see is one-fifth of what I saw, and I'm sorry. It was, it's, this is my legacy, unfortunately, you know, not because I wanted to, that's why I want to change it. But all this legacy, all this destruction, has been done by the people that they have been lucrating from the reef and not giving nothing back. It's amazing that in Cozumel, we don't even have a school of marine biology, and everybody lives off the reef. You know, and the problem is that now, because everything is more important, it is to have the money, then we got to the point where it doesn't matter how much coral dies, as long as money is here. And the problem is that that is not going to change the reality of the people of Cozumel. Because at the end of the day, the people of Cozumel, they make $12 a day. That's the minimum wage in Mexico. And the ones that they make all the money are the owners of all the places and they sell this little salary. So these guys, they're not even worried about if the reef dies or not. They are more worried about if they're going to survive or not. You know? So we have to change all that. We have to change it. The, the, the dive masters, they have to be more aware that if they lose this, it's going to be forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, the people that they are, the tour operators, they have to be more uh, accessible to to maintain the reef that is feeding them, you know, that because every time they just think how many divers I moved today, how much I spent in my boats, how much I did this and that, it's a business, but nobody says how much coral did we broke today or how much have we damaged that reef or nothing, you know, and if we don't change that, then the future is not going to be good. How has the cruise ship industry contributed to that? The cruise ship industry has changed my life in the sense that I was a diver, a happy diver living in Cozumel up until 94. And when they built that pier, in that moment we were marching in the streets saying, don't build a pier there. And they told me, but you're just a veterinarian. You don't know anything about corals. And that's when I said, I'll be there. And that's when I decided to go to the United States and study there to become a marine biologist and come back and say, now I know. Now, what are you going to do about it, you know? And unfortunately, things haven't changed. They think the same way. But now, we are uh, that flare of hope that we're putting in the water by making the people be more appreciative of the corals and what easy it is for us to maintain them alive, you know? Mm -hmm. And we spend a lot of money to go to the reef and blow bubbles over there, but nobody spends some time to say, thank you, reef. Let me go and clean a little bit and see that you are better for the next time I come. Yeah. So you mentioned marching in the streets to protest the pier. What's the history behind that? 
Well, the history is that they built up here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, it, was, it didn't matter. Now you want to know more? Here, exactly where you were diving today, they want to build another pier yeah. on top of the corals that you yeah. were cleaning today. Yeah. And now this pier is gonna be 800 yards long and it's gonna be for seven cruise ships. Mm -hmm. And all the corals that you saw, they may not be here anymore, yeah. you know? Because now the tourism of the cruise ship is so much important that it doesn't matter if all the reefs die. And the people that they come on the ship, if they see two fish on top of a rock covered with algae, but the water is clear, they say, oh my God, I am in the Caribbean. They don't even know how much damage has been done. Here, you saw fish, but you just saw 20 of the 375 species of fish that were supposed to have. Because everything else has been destroyed, because in the moment that you break the coral, you break the food chain. Do you know? So that's why even that little tiny thing, that little polyp, is so important that without it, you won't have whales, you won't have seals, you won't have anything. You know, and that's one of the things. And yeah, I'm saying seals because we had seals in Cozumel up until 1937. They were killed. All the monk seals of the Caribbean, they were exterminated that year. You know, they used them for whatever. And but we had. If you go to Chinchorro Reef, there is a place that is called the Cayo Lobos. That it means wolf, uh, uh, wolf, sea wolves. You know, so. That's the thing, we're changing right now all this and they are saying that it is for the best of the economy but they are killing the goose of the golden eggs mm -hmm. and nobody knows what they have but they don't have it anymore mm -hmm. and that's what is going to happen if we don't do what we're doing now. Yeah. So there is hope, yes, but it depends on us. So is it 